think I'm gonna have to start coming up with some new jives every time we go live. Hanging out here at Castle Rock Talk, thanks for joining me. My name is Sean Hakes and I'm hanging out with some cool peeps today before I inter or, uh, introduce them. A couple quick notes, Castle Rock Police put out earlier today to lock your doors because apparently the uh, break-ins for vehicles is up significantly. So make sure you do that. So today we got an interesting show. We got Josh and Lindsay from JLA Designs. We're gonna be talking about, I guess, off the grid home building and a bunch of other cool stuff regarding engineering and architectural design. Uh, we're also gonna be connecting with Travis McCain with Jen Stone, uh, talking about some cool products. You can kind of see them in the background right there. We're gonna be installing a project on Saturday and we'll be filming that and talking about how easy it is to really improve your curb appeal and everything else. But before further ado, welcome Lindsay and Josh. Hi. Nice. Thanks for having us. Hey, good to see you guys. Let me uh, let me put up your cool, there we go. Now you're up on the lower thirds. So welcome, this is cool. I appreciate you guys kind of randomly deciding to pop in with me. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. Yeah, so you guys got kind of a cool team. Josh is the, the uh, structural engineer, right? And then right. Lindsay is an architect. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves real quick and talk a little bit about uh, what you guys do and your specialties. Yeah, so I'm a, a professional engineer here in Colorado. I've been practicing for about uh, nine years now. Um, and uh, my wife, Lindsay, has her background in architecture. Um, and we just started this, uh, this small company about a year or two ago and started helping families that uh, want to do a custom home or a net zero home. Um, and lately we've been getting more and more into the off-grid off -grid type homes. I'm really excited to kind of help people uh, down that path. So that's kind of the real short answer. <clears throat> awesome. Very cool. Lindsay, how about you? What do you do? Um, like Josh said, we run this together. We're a husband-wife team. Yep. And um, I think we just get excited about being able to help people through this journey. Um, so... Yeah, we're glad we, like Josh said, we started about a year ago and it's been fun and we're excited for what's next and what the Lord has for the future. So. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, tell me a little bit about who JL Design is. <clears throat> yes, um, <laughs> we are, JLA Design is Josh and Lindsay Armstrong and um, we have background in designing custom homes, designing barns, um, other things as well, but that's what we're focused on right now. Um, so yeah. So what gets you up in the morning and, uh, and why did you choose to start a flat rate architectural and engineering design firm? Well, I think just the idea that um, we could help someone who doesn't have to brave this journey alone. Um, we built a custom home a few years ago and it was pretty trying in certain ways, even though we have background in it and um, we know the process pretty well, there are still complicated parts of it. And so the idea that we could help someone secure a loan, get through the building department and get their home built and fulfill a dream without losing their shirt in the process is really exciting and fulfilling to us. <clears throat> And uh, what would the, be the benefit of hiring uh, JL Design for someone who maybe already has a few sketches um, and some idea of what they're wanting? Yeah, well, um, those are actually the people that we love working with, people who have an idea of what they want um, because we are kind of an in-between architectural design firm. So we don't go through the whole process like a traditional firm. Mm -hmm. Um, but we just do the key drawings that someone would need to be able to get through the county and get their bank <clears> loan <throat> and be able to get it built. Um, so if someone has a few sketches and drawings, that's really helpful for us um, because we kind of expect our clients to be part of the process with us. Yeah. And that's why we're able to keep our rates lower. Um, so those are the ideal people that we want. And we take a couple sketches <clears throat> and we turn those into actual construction documents and those are very different construction documents um, are not the same as as a little like floor plan sketch and a couple of pictures from a website those will maybe not get you 
through the building department and get the permits and the things that you need. Um, so we, we take their ideas and turn them into the things that they'll need to get through those pro processes. Yeah, and as like Lindsay was saying, you know, we have kind of a stripped down process. You know, we tried to cut out all the superfluous stuff. And so sure. um, for people who are, um, you know, wanting a, a 10,000 square foot custom mega mansion, we're probably not the right people for them. And then on the other uh, side of the spectrum, you know, if you're wanting to, um, I don't know, just dig a hole in the ground and cover it with a thatch roof or something like that, we're probably not the right people for that either. We're kind of, we're, we're trying to serve the people that are right in between kind of those, those two bookends, kind of the normal, you know, 1,000 to 5,000 square foot home that people know they need to get um, building department approval, you know, maybe people need to get financing and they need help with the documentation to get through that process. Um, so like Lindsay said, we've just taken that process for kind of the normal um, homeowner or home builder and, and stripped it down to, to the bare essentials. So. <clears throat> yeah, that's perfect. How would you guys describe yourselves? Like what's, what makes you guys different than other firms out there? I think basically um, we just put a lot of thought into the design process and the most key parts that would get someone through the building department, um, get their bank loan and get it built, make it understandable for a contractor. So um, by kind of going through that process with our own house and just thinking it through for long periods of time, we feel like we've cut out a lot of the, the parts that just take a lot of time and are unnecessary and cost extra money. So it's basically a flat rate design. Um, we have our clients do the actual, we consider our clients the actual designers and us more of the consultants and the idea that we're kind of coming along together um, to take their sketches, their ideas, um, pictures that they found online and make that into something that they can use like floor plans, elevations, 3D renderings that they can actually submit to their bank to get a loan, the building department and um, ultimately their contractor. So, so it's different in the way that there's less fat and just more of the key things to get them where they want to go. Awesome. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, and I can uh, I can vouch for them too because I had Josh help me out. You know, we're looking at building a, a hangar at some some point in the near future. And we needed just some kind of general sketches and things like that to kind of show the property owners and things like that what our vision was um, for the proposal process before we even got to the next side. So that was awesome. Thanks, John. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, Josh, I got some questions for you before we go into that real quick. Since we're talking about plans why don't we pull up a couple of the plans and maybe you can uh, just briefly explain them uh, oh my god yeah. i got the first plan up i know you guys probably can't see them but josh it's the you know i don't even, i don't even want to pretend like i know what it is so <laughs> i'll let you i'll let you describe it's probably, it that's, it's probably the site plan site launch. plan there you go yep yeah so um we don't have to spend too much time talking about that but a lot of uh building departments and authorities having jurisdictional require that and we we put that together for our clients, it's really no big deal, um, but it just shows setbacks from the property lines and, and different things like that. And the clients will have to work with a surveyor also to get um, the information that's needed for that um, for that plan. But I won't I won't go too far into into depth on that. All right, let's look at the next one. So it looks like a kind of a 3D rendering of a house with the footers and all that good stuff in there. Yeah, so we do um, we do all our projects in 3D. We model them in 3D. So um, if clients want to, um, you know, do a 3D orbit around the the building and even go and do a virtual walkthrough um, before you know the first shovel full of dirt is ever thrown, um, they can do that. A, a lot of people really really like that. So we just do that as standard for all of our projects. Um, and some of those, as you tick through some of those other um, graphics, some of them show you know just Kind of all the line work that goes into a 3D model of a, a custom home or a custom home addition. Um, so <clears throat> clients can get a really good sense for what um, what's being put on paper and what's eventually going to be built. And then the final one looks like a uh, kind of a completed rendering. Okay. Yeah. Did you have something more on that? Well, oh, yeah. I just wanted to add that part of the purpose of us showing that is that. Um, this was a client that we worked with and just one example of a house that we did. And she, I don't know if you can see this, but it's just a little sketch that oh, she yeah, came yeah. She 
Um, she drew this on graph paper to give me an idea of some of the rooms that she wanted. I think this was actually based off of a drawing set that she found online that she wanted to alter because um, that's the problem with the online ones is you can't make any changes so they're not they can't fit your site or the needs that you have specifically. So she drew that and then she kind of came with a few photos. Um, oh yeah. Kind of at the beginning, she was just asking the question like, well, it seems like I've already designed it and I have these photos. So what more do I really need? You know, and those are fair questions to ask. And so just wanted to give an example that um, that she came with the ideas but that having those drawings alone would be very hard to get through a building department or go to a bank and for them to understand <clears throat> what you're saying versus like actual construction documents where the details are there and it's a little more clear. So just to show what, what our client came with and kind of what they ended up getting in the process from working with JLA. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Love it. Um, and then that third one, just I'll briefly pull that up to Josh. Is this a, uh, and Lindsay, is this a completed 3D imagery of a house? It looks like, you know, you've got the landscaping in, you got the roof, the windows, all that good stuff. <laughs> Tell me yeah. what I'm looking at. <laughs> so we, we can do uh, renderings as well based on the 3D model. So the raw 3D model is, um, looks just a little bit more cartoony and that's what we use to produce all of our drawings, like our floor plans and elevations and sections everything the contractor is going to want and the county building department is going to want. But we can also produce renderings um, like that um, for use by the homeowner and, and for presentation to their lender and, and things like that. So, Yeah, very cool. Let me, uh, it's neat. You guys put together some good stuff. Fancy. Um, all right, so back to you, Josh. Let's get to the off-the-grid home part of it because I think that's, uh, that's a big topic right now. You know, a lot of people are like, man, I wish before this happened, I would have had a house that was off the grid. Um, and yeah. I think more and more people are interested in it. So maybe you can help us define better. What is an off the grid home? Yeah. I mean, just real simply, you know, it, it means a home that's not connected and tied to the electrical grid, right? So a home that's able to produce all of its own, uh, power electricity. But there's kind of a lot more nuance there. You know, some people um, get into, um, you know, what kind of fossil fuels are you going to use? Are you going to be on propane? Um, mm -hmm. Things like that. And how, how resilient um, and, and off the beaten path do you really want to be? But just on a basic level, it's, it's a home that's not tied to the electricity grid. So you're producing your power some other way, whether that's by solar panels or uh, wind turbines. Um, geothermal, there's a whole bunch of different uh, range of options there. So, And do you guys help with the sizing of the solar systems, the wind systems, et cetera, needed? Yeah, we certainly can do that. Um, there's obviously solar is kind of the big, um, the big player there. Um, and we use, uh, you know, a number of software tools and things like that. But ultimately what, what people, what most people need is just, um, to size their system based on their loads. Um, so what appliances they're using, how much lighting they're gonna have, um, all that sort of thing. And kind of the most important thing for people who are looking from looking at going from on-grid to off-grid um, is kind of looking at their lifestyle, you know, mm -hmm. number one, and um, the appliances and things that they're using, number two, and how they can be more efficient, you know, because efficiency is, is kind of the number one. It's the foundation of everything you do in the off-grid design process. Um, so that's kind of step one. But yeah, we can definitely help with sizing uh, solar arrays, battery banks, um, selecting charge controllers, um, inverters, all the components that go into that system. Um, and then we, we kind of help steer people a little bit as to whether um, they might want to consider wind. Yeah. Uh, so there's some um, some regulations and also some zoning rules and things like that that kind of come into play when you start looking at wind. Um, but it is it is a really good option, especially to supplement uh, a solar system. So having your solar panels producing power during the day and then you know at night you get a little bit more out of the out of the wind system that can can really help um, optimize the system because um, batteries are very expensive and there's a whole host of issues that go into um, batteries. So if you can kind of optimize with wind and solar, um, 
that can really help people. So <clears throat> let's talk about the elephant in the room financing uh, for this type of project. Uh, how do people typically <clears throat> do that? Yeah. Um, I'll just be right up front. Financing a, an off grid um, project is more difficult than financing a, a conventional house. So most lenders are looking for um, conventional because they want to know that if you know if the lender defaults, they can take that home and turn around and, and sell it again. So um, with financing off grid, you're not going to be able to go. Typically, you're not going to be able to go to the big institutional <coughs> uh, lenders. You're going to end up going to um, smaller, what they call portfolio lenders, which are your community um, banks and credit unions and stuff like that. Um, and we have a couple that we can recommend to people. You know, recommendations are are free. So if anybody needs that info, um, we can point them in, in certain directions. But we, that's not our area of expertise for sure. Um, we're not we're not bankers, but um, I do know that it, it's a little more challenging, so people should start looking into that if you're getting serious about the process, um, and just be prepared, you know, to to maybe pay a little bit higher um, interest rate mm -hmm. percentage. And then the other thing is, if you can build um, or design your home in such a way that it looks like a traditional home, in most respects, but it but it is off grid. <clears throat> Then, you know, oftentimes what the bank will do is they will look and say, well, how much would it cost us to get this thing grid tied um, mm -hmm. in the event that the, the homeowner does, um, right. you know, skip town. <laughs> right. So um, so that's a good thing to, to look at Just say, hey, you know, we're going to design it mostly in a conventional way, but it's going to be off grid. And then you can uh, have a better time finding lenders who will who will talk with you and work with you. So Well, and I just kind of wanted to add that. Um, there are in between options as well. Like you can do an, a really energy efficient home that's grid tied, where maybe you have a battery storage for your solar panels, where if something happened with the grid, power went out for a few days, you would you would still have your solar mm. panels um, yeah, you, point. producing energy for you. So, um, so there's honestly a lot of options in between the spectrum of off-grid and grid tied. There's so much in between where you can have a really efficient home that you get financed that works for you. And if you're looking to be completely off-grid, you can make that work. There are ways to make it work. Like Josh said, um, yeah. it might not be the easiest to get financed, um, but if that's really what you want, like JLA will try to help you get there in any way we can. Um, but you might find that there's something in between that's maybe even a better fit for you and still really efficient and um, solar powered and everything else. So totally, yeah. yeah. The ones we've seen have a tough time are the are the folks who say, oh, I, I want to just take one shipping container and I want to drop it out on the site and <laughs> I want to throw some solar panels on top and and you know if, if you can bootstrap that with cash, great, you know and and uh, stuff. But you're gonna have a hard time finding uh, financing for that for that kind of dream. It's it's tough. <laughs> it, it can be tough. So yeah. <clears throat> cool. Well, we got about. Five minutes left, so I got a couple other questions for you guys. Um, for for the local building departments, who is it that actually approves the uh, the construction for these projects? Yeah, so um, you know, there's different uh, what they call authorities having jurisdiction, AHJ, and and those um, basically usually it's your county building department is who you're you're talking with um, when you're building out, you know, in rural areas. Um, <clears throat> So the county building department, what they do is they they want to see your set of plans and they're going to review those plans against um, their adopted building code. So different counties have adopted different versions of the building code. Uh, so many people know about the International Residential Code, which has been adopted now by most um, authorities having jurisdiction, but they, they've all adopted different versions of it. So some people are on the 2015 and some people are on the 2018 and some people are back in the Stone Age. So, um, you know, that, that's really what what's going on with them is they they'll take your set of plans, they'll review it against the building code, and then they'll either approve or or deny it with with comments. You know, um, <clears throat> does that get at what you're asking? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, and so, you know, this is something that I looked into a while ago. Obviously, we didn't do it, um, but but some of the other issues, not issues, but areas that I was wondering about was uh, like whether or not like internet phone communication, stuff like that. How does that work? Especially if you're like way out there, like you guys or, 
you know, I'm sure there's probably like satellite options and things like that, but what, what are some things that you guys recommend? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, so we're on, <laughs> we're on 11 acres here and a lot of our neighbors are on 40 acres or whatever. Um, and there's some dish like dish to tower options out here. And I know there's other, um, other satellite options as well, HughesNet or whatever. Um, but you know, another thing to think about is that all that stuff takes electricity too. And a lot of that equipment is running all the time. So whether it be your, um, you know, your modem, your router, whatever you've got, um, you've got to kind of factor that in when you calculate your, your list of electrical loads. Um, so that's an important thing to remember too. Even though you can get communication in some of these places for sure using the satellite options. Um, and maybe you're going to work remotely or whatever. Um, you got to account for the, the communication side of it, but then also the electrical um, load side of what you're doing. So every every project's a little different. Every client's got different requirements. Um, you know, for my for my work, you know, I use modeling computers and modeling laptops and stuff, and they draw more power. You know, when I look at right. like my power supply on my computer, it's different than if you're just just got like a basic laptop for doing Word and Excel and that kind of stuff. So um, it's a good thing to think through for sure. And do people ever overcompensate? Like for me, for example, if I was building a house and I wouldn't want to know, you know, what I need to just get by, I would want to know like, all right, if worst case scenario happens, this is how much I want to be able to take. Is that something you guys can help with too? Yeah, definitely. So it's kind of splitting some of those if I understood you right, kind of splitting some of those loads into um, kind of emergency or critical. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Versus mm -hmm. just your general everyday. So maybe, maybe when an emergency comes, I'm not gonna like my wife makes smoothies, you know, and, and she'll like <laughs> leave the blender going for like a half an hour or something like that. Which I mean, her smoothies are amazing. Uh, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but um, you know, maybe you're like, okay, I'm gonna cut down to uh, one smoothie a day, you know, <laughs> during during crisis time. But yeah, just kind of looking through those that load list and, and saying, okay, these are the critical um, and these are the less critical. And you can even organize your power system that way to say, hey, we're just gonna shut off these loads during during crisis time, you know, um, yeah. and do that right at your power panel. So all those things um, are, are definitely good ideas. Cool, and what about like water, sewer, gas, things like that? What's, what's the typical process and what does that look like with these types of homes? Yeah. Um, well, I know we're short on time, so I won't get too into depth, but, um, no, you're good. We got, we got a little bit of time. You're good. Yep. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, county building departments do require, um, that you have, uh, water sewer and some form of heat. So, um, you know, for the building to be considered, uh, habitable, you know, every room has to, every, uh, excuse me, every bedroom has to be heated. Um, you know, and you need to have either a well water source, um, something like that with a septic system so that you have um, uh, drinking water and, and waste treatment and things. So those are requirements and those are, um, there are people who are, who are good at that stuff and do nothing but that and, and we'll plug people into to those folks to make sure they get taken care of. But it's just good to keep it on the radar that, um, you know, water, sewer, um, heat and also a access driveway those are requirements um now in, in pretty much every jurisdiction so got it just to add that that's part of what jla design does um as far as um i've had many conversations either over the phone or over email where it's kind of an initial client conversation where people are like okay this is kind of what i'm thinking like these are the numbers i'm thinking this is the kind of loan that i'm thinking like in an hour or less, let's just talk through, like, if you think that's doable, like they've asked kind of us, mm. here's a bunch of things that I've been thinking about going off grid, doing my house, like, are these numbers, are these things realistic? And so that's part of what we do is, you know, kind of an initial consultation to just, hey, let's, let's just spout off all these things together process in like, you know, an hour over the phone and figure out if this is something you want to do moving forward, because there are, like you said, there are a lot of costs involved as far as maybe getting a well dug that is not oh, yeah. part of city water and that's not cheap to do. And so those are all considerations in the process for sure. So if someone's interested in whether it's the consulting flat rate fees um, or off the grid home building, what is the best way for them to reach out to you guys? 
<clears throat> yeah, I would say just go um, go over to jladesign.co. So it's like .com, but without the M, you know? Uh, yeah, so yeah. Well, it's becoming more common these days, so it makes <laughs> sense. Uh, we, we were like, hey, it's like Colorado, so we'll just go with that. Oh, yeah. So um, jladesign.co, um, they can go over there. They can find our, our phone number and our email and all that stuff and, and hit us up. And we'll, we'll consult with people for free. Don't feel like, you know, it's uh, – there's going to be some kind of obligation or burden or whatever. We'll we'll chat with you over the phone. If it sounds like it might be a good fit, we'll meet with you for coffee um, and all that stuff. And or see over a Zoom sense. call if we're still in this crowd. Or, 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 or Virtual or coffee. Yeah. Virtual coffee. Yeah. We'll have our coffee Not here. Exciting, you have your but coffee. it's doable. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I would say just uh, jladesign.co would be the best place. jladesignsingular.co. And, uh, and, yeah. we'll, and we'll be sure to drop it in the comments. Oh, in the video. A, Sean. J-L-A. J-L-A. I know. Why do I keep forgetting that? <laughs> J-L-A. I know. You've probably corrected oh. me indirectly probably a dozen times through this show. So <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm like, hey, J-L design. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. It's my, oh. it's, it's my multitasking inability. <laughs> That's what I blame it on every time. <clears throat> so cool. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us. Um, this has been a lot of fun. We'll have to do it again sometime, maybe in person once we this all passes at some point. Miss hanging out with you guys. It's been fun. So. Hey, yeah, yeah, for thanks, sure. Sean. Cool. Thanks, guys. Have thanks a so good much day. for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming on. We'll catch you later. All right. See you. Thanks. <clears throat> all right, everyone, you're watching Castle Rock Talk. We are going to be right back with Travis McCain. Um, from Genstone, the VP of marketing from Genstone, that really cool product right here behind us. We're going to be talking about that. We'll be back in a few.